Let's look in a, at an example using universal gravitational law and the potential energy associated with it. And the one we're going to look at is kind of an interesting example. We're going to look at how much energy does it take for this ball to essentially escape the planet. So how much energy is required if we were to start it off, what's its initial velocity uh, to get off the Earth's surface and travel to some point in space where the Earth is no longer affecting it. So we call this escape velocity or the velocity that the object needs to escape from a planet or from the Earth's orbit. Well, the Earth has certain requirements. It has an initial uh, distance away. We are at some distance away. We're at the Earth's surface, so 6.378 times 10 to the 6 meters if we want to use Earth. And also the Earth has some mass, uh, 6 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. So what we're going to do, just same stuff that we've done before, we're going to use conservation of energy. So we look at this, we have initial kinetic energy of this object, we have initial potential energy of this object, and then we're going to look at what happens when it's at its really far distance away. What's its final kinetic energy and what's its final potential energy. And this is pretty straightforward. So first thing we need to do, we go through and we find out that the final kinetic energy is zero. You know, if the object we'd want to find the minimum speed to get this object to be escaped. If it has any extra, it's going to have some final kinetic energy, but since we want to get it out there, not any, any, any extra energy of motion, so no kinetic energy. So we just substitute into this equation all of our values we've used before. What is the kinetic energy? What's its potential energy? However, this time when we substitute in the potential energy, we're just going to be careful to make sure that the potential energy takes the right form, and that's the universal gravitational form. So u equals negative g m1 m2 over r, and we substitute everything in. So we have g m1 v uh, initial squared, so what's its initial velocity? This is the value we're looking for. So what velocity do we need to get off this planet? So initial kinetic energy, 1 f mv squared, its initial potential energy, negative g m m over r, its initial radius, equals g m m over r final. Well, we know that r final is uh, the escape or is the distance when it's escaped the Earth's gravity, so we set that equal to infinity. And we substituted it. So I'm going to move this guy to the other side. So I get 1 half mv squared is equal to the final term minus the initial term, and we gain an extra minus sign for moving to the other side. Well, this value right here, this gm m over infinity, infinity is a really, really large number, which means anything on top is never going to be as large as this infinity, so this looks like 1 over a really large number, which is essentially 0. So this guy will cancel out gmm over r squared, 1 half mv squared, the m1s will cancel out as well. I move the 2 to the other side, so this 2 becomes that 2, this gme becomes right there, this initial height didn't drop out, this is our initial height away from the planet, we're on the Earth's surface, is here, and then the square root to get its velocity. Well, Here's the fun thing. If we were to actually substitute everything in, this quantity right here, over here, is very similar to our value of little g, except for there's an extra value of the radius here. So if we have a planet, if we're leaving from the Earth's surface, this planet will have, or the, uh, of a planet that has a value of g, you know, g for Earth is 9.8, then the escape velocity is given in its classic form, 2gRi. But really, it comes down to 2g, big G, m over Ri. So gravitation constant, the mass of the object we're leaving, and the radius that we are starting away from it are really the only things that go into our escape velocity. So very simple uh, example problem showing escape velocity, but really the important point is how do we use this potential energy and just how do we substitute it in We're using the same conservation of energy equation we've seen before except for this time we have a little bit of a different form of our potential energy.
keep track of our minus signs, keep track of our initials and our finals, everything that we've done before. It just all works out the same um, in terms of using conservation of energy. And we get an interesting result that we get this thing called escape velocity.